Hey, last Saturday on the CNC with Dave show, I mentioned that I had put some uh, homing switches and also made a touch plate for my Gatton CNC. And since then, I've had uh, two or three people ask me to show what my setup is. So uh, it's real simple. It's just one of the uh, Xylotex breakout boards. Uh, so I'll show that. I'll show the wiring that I used. And also, I've had some folks ask me about the drag chain that I used and how I've got that set up on my machine so I'll try to show that as well and hopefully uh, you guys that are building GAT and CNC's can get some ideas on, on how you want to do it on your machines. So let's get started. I bought these switches uh, off of Amazon and I'll have a link down below in the description for those who want to want to find these. Uh, I bought a pack of six uh, I've got three left, obviously, because I only put three on there. I only I only put mine on there to use as homing switches. So I've got one on the Z, one on the X, and one on the Y. And I'll show you how I wire those up here in just a second. They're real easy to set up. And I'll also uh, show you my Mach 3 settings uh, so you can see how, how that went. This is the big old spool of wire. I ended up buying 500 feet of this, but... Uh, I don't know how much I use, probably not near that much. But this is just some 18-gauge uh, stranded uh, speaker cable. Uh, I like it because it's in the nice uh, little, uh, you know, plastic sleeve here, and it just has the two wires, the red and the black, which is what I need uh, to run the limit switches. Okay, here's a uh, a shot of the switch that I have on my x-axis this is you know again I'm just using these as homing switches I just have a piece of uh, inch and a half by inch and a half aluminum angle that I had laying around uh, just kind of screwed it into the rails here and mounted my switch here so that when the X uh, carriage comes across it will trip that switch and set the zero for the x-axis and here you can see the uh, black and white or black and red wires that I was talking about the uh, red one goes on the bottom here where it's normally closed and the black one goes up here uh, for the common and I'll show you where these go uh, down onto the breakout board here in just a minute okay here is the switch for my Y axis like I said I'm only using one switch and I have it over here on the right side of the machine and I just have just a scrap piece of aluminum. This is, I think, is 1 16th aluminum, and I just made just a little, cut a little piece off and screwed it to the back here. And you can see as it backs up, it will trip the switch like so. And uh, set the zero for the Y axis. Okay, here is the switch for the um, Z axis. And I had to get a little creative with that one. So I just, because I have these spacer blocks and they're made out of HDPE and it taps real easily, I just drilled a hole and tapped it, put a uh, quarter 20 screw in there, and then I have some adjustment. And uh, then I used a piece of angle uh, mounted to the cross piece on the Z axis carriage. And that, uh, you know, so sort of basically when it travels up, the screw trips the switch. Uh, and sets the zero there. And I'll show these all moving here in just a second. Okay, here is a shot. It's a little dark under here because I keep my uh, Xylotex box, which I'm pointing to right here, keep it up under the back right side of the table, and that seems to keep uh, a minimum amount of dust. I've kind of got like a little shelf thrown across here. Uh, this is my breakout board. Uh, you can see I've got the old style that uh, Xylotex used to make where it's got the uh, parallel cables coming straight through. Uh, it also has uh, over here I have a little terminal block uh, the, and the reason I have that is over here on this side where you put the ground on the uh, breakout board since I was going to have three switches I knew I'd never be able to get all those wires crammed up under there so I use this terminal block here and I actually have four things going here. I've got each of the three switches and then I also have the wires for my touch plate. And right here where you see a big wad of uh, black wires, they're all going to a single terminal and then I have this one wire here uh, coming out with the ground. And you see these other uh, ground wires over here are not even attached. So they all kind of go in this little junction terminal block 
and come over here to the breakout board and then each one of the uh, the three switches and the touch plate go to um, the uh, respective pins that it, that it needs to go to. Also you notice I've got this is a, uh, a little Motorola uh, an old phone charger that I had to supply power but for what I'm using it for I don't need power uh, for the switches and the uh, um, touch plate so I don't even have that plugged up uh, also if you notice right back here where I'm pointing I have a fan that's uh, an AC fan just plugged straight into an AC outlet and I have that blowing in the rear of my Zotex box one of these fans in this box has been making a lot of racket and I know it's about to go in fact I don't hear it now so it may not even be turning but uh, so I, I have that bigger fan. Eventually, I, I want to clean up all this mess here and build a bigger box and hide all this uh, junky wiring and stuff because it's kind of messy right now. But it works, and, and I've been operating with it like that. Here is a view of my uh, drag chain. It's the 15 millimeter by 30 millimeter. Uh, and again, I'll have a link in the description of this video for that. You can see my tray isn't anything fancy. I just took a couple of wood blocks, put a couple of screws right under here to hold the block on each end, and then I had some uh, three-quarter by three-quarter uh, by one-eighth angle left over from all the machine builds I've done. So I think this piece is, I don't know, 56 or so inches long. So I just used those, and it works out pretty good because since there's a gap here, the dust kind of doesn't collect inside this tray. Um, so that's for the, uh, the side going along the, uh, the y-axis here. Okay, it's kind of tight quarters right here, but I tried to get a shot here showing you the drag chain. Again, it's the 15 millimeter by 30 millimeter. Uh, just screwed a little wood block here. And in fact, I think I used my Craig jig uh, to attach these. Here you can see where I use the Craig jig. Uh, right here, or maybe that's just a, maybe just out of shot. But I just made these little wooden brackets. The only reason I made those is because I had two four-foot pieces of angle left, and this is longer than four feet. So I just made this little wooden angle here. Let me see if I can swing the camera around, where it just attaches and then comes over this way far enough to uh, to allow me to fasten the angle, and that works uh, fine as a tray. Uh, and again, it's just two pieces of a three-quarter by three-quarter angle. Okay, I hope I've got that uh, focused in right. Uh, I wanted to show you real quick the settings that I used for the uh, homing switches. Uh, you just come down here in the config, go to ports and pins, come over here to my input signals, uh, right here where it says X home, uh, Y home, and Z home. You see I have all those checked. It is port 1 and it's uh, pin number 12 for the x-axis, pin number 13 for the y-axis, and pin number 11 for the z-axis. You can also see that I, I have experimented and enabled the uh, uh, plus plus so that it will act as a limit switch uh, and stop that if I go too far. However, I found that uh, even though that works, once you once you trip it, then you got to shut it off and move it off that switch, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So I just try to be careful, uh, you know, and not not trip that switch because I'm used to not running, you know, used to running uh, no limit switches or homing switches anyway. So it's uh, I'm finally starting to get get the hang of it and not uh, run it back too far. So those are uh, how I set up the homing switches. Well now when you want to preference home, you just hit this and you can see the Z starting to move. Then the Y will move back until it meets, meets its switch. Finally, the x-axis is the last one.
So, so in order to get this auto tool, zero, auto tool zero button to work, you need to add a script to that. And to do that, you just click on operator, come down here to edit button script, and then the buttons that uh, you can change or edit. Uh, so you want to come down here and select this auto tool zero, and it will come up with a uh, place for you to put your script. Now I didn't write this. This was uh, I watched the video by Guru Brew, uh, and Steve offered this uh, a link to this script. I don't know whether he wrote it or if he got it somewhere, but uh, anyway, I haven't changed a thing on it other than uh, right here where this point one two zero is. That's where you have to set the the thickness of your plate. I'm using uh, eighth inch aluminum angle, and when I put the calipers on it it came up to exactly 0 0.120 so that's what I put in other than that everything else is exactly the same as it was when uh, I first downloaded it uh, if you notice when you hit the uh, auto tool zero it has a little bit of a delay and that's I left it in there because that way if you forget to put your angle into there or you've got it where it's going to hit the bit and crash uh, you get a chance to move it around before it actually gets started um, but there's the script so I just uh, downloaded that uh, from the link that uh, Steve at Guru Brew provided and then I just uh, copied and pasted that in here like I said the only thing I changed was this .120 so if you're using a piece of quarter inch plate or whatever you would need to change that to .250 uh, other than that you can pretty much leave everything just like it is Okay, so hopefully you got something out of that. I do want to mention that, like I said, the breakout board that I was showing is one of the old ones from Xylotex that has the parallel port connection on both ends. I'm running a uh, UC100 motion controller, which goes to a USB port in the computer down to the uh, UC100. Then it has a, a parallel, a 15 foot parallel uh, cable connected runs to one side of that uh, breakout board and then I have another three foot parallel cable running out of the other side of that uh, parallel cable or breakout board uh, going to the box. Uh, the box that I'm using for uh, the Zyotech box that I'm using for this particular machine I believe it's one of the older ones that only has the single uh, parallel port in the back uh, the newer ones he makes has a double parallel port and you can use either one with the parallel cable and the other one for the uh, breakout board and a lot of folks can use a, a different breakout board. Now this isn't one of his but this is one I got with a different kit and you notice it just has the one parallel uh, cable and of course it's got all the inputs and outputs on here. Uh, so if you have one of the older boxes, uh, you're going to have to find one that has, uh, you know, a straight through thing where you can hook a parallel cable up to it and hook another one to it to go to the box. I've got one uh, that I found on Amazon, in fact I've got a couple on the way here uh, that I bought and uh, I'll put, put the link down in the video description for those as well because uh, they may be getting kind of hard to find because like I say the parallel cable thing is slowly but surely going away so uh, we've got to uh, got to keep up with the changes I guess so anyway hopefully everybody got something out of this video um, and you know maybe you could get some ideas on how they want to do their GAT and CNC I want to thank you all for watching this video if you liked it please hit the like button below thumbs up or whatever it is like thumbs up I don't know one of those um, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to me so that's going to do it for this video. Everybody take care, and we'll talk to you all later.